Hi everyone! In my previous video, I talked about how we can use MLflow to evaluate LLMs. We focused mainly on universal tools that can be used not only with LLMs, but also with uh, more traditional machine learning or deep learning models. If you are not familiar with MLflow, I strongly recommend you to check out the previous video before you continue with this one. Today, we are going to talk a bit about a few MLflow features designed specifically for LLMs. First, we will take a look at LLM deployment server, and then we will explore MLflow's prompt engineering interface. So let's begin. The main idea behind the MLflow's deployment server is to give you a unified API for different LLMs both proprietary and open source. And as we will see later, it is also a requirement for some other LLM related features inside MLflow. In this video, we will be reusing the virtual environment we created in the previous video with Rai. If you want to use the MLflow's deployment server, we need to install a Gen AI Extra. Before we can actually run the deployment server, we first need to create a YAML config file containing our LLM configurations. We can choose between different types of endpoints, completions, embeddings or chat. Let's start simple and create a completions endpoint on top of GPT 3.5. In this case, we will be retrieving the API key from an environment variable. After saving the config file, we can start the deployment server from the command line like this. The deployment server provides an API, but we can also use a Python library that makes our lives a bit easier. Let's start by asking our new completions endpoint to tell us what is the capital of France. If you are familiar with any of the proprietary LLM APIs, you should understand most of the arguments here. Temperature basically tells the model how random should the output be, max tokens determines the maximum length of the answer, and n tells us how many uh, candidate answers will be generated. So, as you just saw, you could use the MLflow deployment server to talk to different LLMs via a unified API in Python. But as I mentioned earlier, deployment server also gives you access to some additional LLM related features directly in MLflow. One of them is the prompt engineering interface. Let's keep the MLflow deployment server running uh, in one tab and start the MLflow itself in another. Before we actually run the serve command as we did in the previous video, we first have to store 
the URL of our deployment server in an environment variable so MLflow can actually find it. Let's now create a new experiment in the MLflow UI. Our task for today will be to examine how different LLMs can handle the task of creating a self-study program for different subjects. So let's call our experiment study programs. We can now create a new run by clicking on the new run button and choosing using prompt engineering. In the interface, we can select the LLM we want to use. Since we only defined one endpoint in our deployment server configuration, this choice isn't that hard. Next, we define our prompt template. The prompt template can also contain variables inside double curly braces, and we can set the value of each variable in the field that appears below the prompt template. We also set the maximum number of tokens to a high enough value. And we can test the prompt by clicking on the evaluate button. If we are happy with the result, we can click on Create Run. MLflow created a table containing all the variables that it found in the prompt template and the outputs provided by different models. We can easily add new rows to evaluate. Now we can evaluate all the new data points by clicking on Evaluate All. One important thing to note here is that MLflow actually doesn't save the changes automatically. We either have to click the Save button or use the Ctrl plus S keyboard shortcut. Now let's make things a bit more interesting by adding two additional models to our deployment server. Uh, we can add GPT-40 and Cloud 2.1 from Anthropic. You might ask why are we adding this old version of Claude 2.1 when there is already Claude Sonnet 3.5. And the reason is that MLflow actually doesn't natively support these newer versions yet. Uh, there is a way uh, to support these models. We could create a Python wrapper that's compatible with MLflow, but that's a topic for another video. So for now, we'll just stick with this older version Claude 2.1. Now we just restart the deployment server and create two new runs. The easiest way to do this is by simply copying the, the original run and changing the model. You can now click on the Evaluate All button to run the prompt for all inputs.
If you look at the outputs, we can see that the GPT-40 already provides uh, quite a good quality of results. But maybe we could slightly improve it by asking the model to always include resources. So let's duplicate our GPT-40 run and modify the prompt to give us one textbook and one online course for each section of our study plan. And as we can see here, we are getting quite reasonable output. And that's it for this video. We explored a few features of MLflow that are designed specifically for LLMs, namely deployment servers and the prompt engineering UI. One important thing to note here is that both of these features are experimental. I think it's quite unlikely that MLflow kill these features, but you might encounter a few bugs or it might be the case that the API or the UI changes a bit over time. In the next video, we will take a look at defining and deploying custom MLflow compatible models in Python. So stay tuned.